Hello? We're the Arcade Brigade. Nelson Cavangini. Today we'll be commenting on an article called It's Time Game Journalism Grew Up, written by uh, Lee Alexander for Edge. Uh, the link will be posted below. Let's see. There's a lot to comment on here, so let's take it in steps. <laughs> okay, so she says the uh, the video game industry has gone to it's too sexist. People they're using sex to sell uh, violence. Yeah, the E three, uh, these Hitman trailers, Tomb Raider. It's just every the whole industry is just using TNA uh, and gross, and ass. <laughs> gross violence, all that stuff to sell. Just to sell a video game. At one point, she talks about two video games, uh, Lara Croft and Hitman. Um, and we can kind of split them up, I think, because with Lara Croft, it sounds like she's taking the angle of uh, degrading women, uh, violence against women purely as a selling point. Or that's just it. Lara Croft in general. Her or just Lara Croft in general, just being sex icon, and that's all she's good for. Which is not true. Which I don't think is true. I mean, in the 90s, it totally held true. Uh, I, I heard, actually, that... Her enlarged bust was actually uh, a glitch. It was a flaw by a programmer. And then um, I think game testers liked it, so they kept it in. They weren't actually going to be like, let's just put in this chick with these, like, big-ass polyg polygonal breasts in it. Like, okay, if she's doing parkour and getting her ass kicked and walking away from it alive, I think that's... Badass! Exactly. That's awesome! Right? I agree. She's a kick-ass lady. I would love to be Lara Croft. That's fucking awesome. Would Why is that parkour bad? with me? Sure! Yeah! I mean, we do it with men in video games. <laughs> Devil May Cry. Nobody ever comments on Dante like, he's a sexy dude. Right. They're pandering. Where I do agree is where she's talking about pandering to men, like with the Hitman trailer. Uh when the women are wearing the, the nun outfits and they go to assassinate number 47 and then they take them off. Don't worry, I got my combat boost DA on. I got this shit. <laughs> Heels. Why, why is this the trailer? Okay, the whole so, point of the, the sexy oh, ladies no. coming out with I guns to, and shit I tried to and then blowing to brains point. out from this distance and it's Hitman, just to sell copies Hitman, to fucking idiots. They say, oh, look at that, it's pretty and it's crazy and it's her. I'm going to buy it. universe, he followed a priest for a certain amount of years to try and, uh, he was trying to get absolution. He was trying to repent his sins. And uh, so they were nuns because that's how they could uh, infiltrate, I guess. But um, they all strip down. I mean, if that's Heels. what they need to wear <laughs> to assassinate... One, assassinate. if you're going to impersonate a nun, do you wear heels? Two, if you're going to kill someone, do you wear heels? In neither situation does that even make sense. Well, that's how the whole 47 point... was able to kill, like, ten of them. <laughs> he wore pumps. <laughs> that's how he did it. He wore pumps. Pumps or um, heels? What? Anyway, but you do think that that... The Hitman trailer was... Was pandering. Was pandering. It was pandering. It was ridiculous. It was, it was crap. I mean, they probably realized that, and that's probably what they were going for. And the it's whole... Bullshit. The whole E3 booth babe. Oh. Uh, <sighs> yeah, we gotta get I agree that. with her, too. It's at a point where it's absurd. The amount of women that are walking around to sell video games, and how completely that doesn't make sense. The women standing around while video game play doesn't... It's stupid. It's just pandering. It's bullshit. It's useless, and it makes us look bad. Us, video gamers. Because what if, like, you know, some person's just watching TV and they'll, like, see, like, oh, E3 coverage. There's just nothing but naked women here. These guys are perverts. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't yeah. think that there's, like, a serious problem with it when it's... When it happens all the time, not just in the gaming industry. It happens everywhere, because that's what sells. Yeah. Well, well let's... Well, it can, sorry. it can happen. Let's it can, segue, it can be let's there. segue yeah. into the the other idea that she was talking about. The only thing that's keeping, you know, publishers in check is money. That's the only thing. And that's what she's saying is that journalists should also keep them in check. The game could be great, but if it doesn't sell, they won't make a sequel. Right. Doesn't matter. Right. The game would be crap, but if it sells, they'll make 30 sequels. Money is what matters. There should be other input, and, that's w and who are the only other voices, ex if not game journalists? I do think that people should talk a little say, louder. I people! 
People should talk a little. Well, we don't talk. We talk with our wallets. That's and that and that's where we're fucking up. We're talking with our wallets, and we won't shut up about all this crap coming out and just tossing the money. But what, that's but what no, we talk. How is we? Game no. journalists should be the voices of reason oh, if we fail. We're obviously failing. <laughs> so, yeah, so, like, you're right. Like, in one second, it's mm. like, you guys are obviously pandering. And then the, then they respond like, yeah, we're pandering. We just sold, like, three million copies. And then we turn around and go, what the hell are you guys doing? It's bad on both sides. And maybe she's right. Maybe game journalism is this moral standard that we should hold up and revere, and that should be the... The general sentiment towards Mass Effect 3 was that the ending was terrible. So yeah. every, everyone, the journalists, the uh, editors, bloggers, the public, we, we all went after EA and we were like, you can't do this to us. You can't, you gotta, you gotta do this right. And um, they, they caved and they gave us the extended edition lost ending. Did you have to buy it? <clears throat> no, it was free. That's the... Yeah, they, so they caved, so yeah. They listen to the, they listen to us. Right. We have power. Journalists are kind of pandering too because what if, what if they're getting paid to write something great about which is happening shit game. more and more. Exactly, it's happening more and more. So it's kind of like a lose lose when I think about it. So I kind of just roll with it. I don't really like to complain about it or like the ethical issues in involving companies, journalists. Yeah. And us because yeah. it's it's such a lose lose. Everyone is just completely corrupt. That yeah. and I know that sounds yeah. awful. That I know, I'm but where like, do you, where so else do you see this? Everywhere, literally everywhere. <laughs> everywhere Movies, else. TV, music, everywhere. This isn't just a video game problem. It's strange that she's. I guess it's because she's a game journalist, so she just sees it from the game journalist angle. This is everywhere, and it's it's sad to see this negative trend for all of video gaming. Because, you know, like, we grew up, and it was... Movies were already corrupted. Yeah, right. You know, TV was already corrupted. But when we were kids, I don't think video games were corrupted yet. There were so many right. good things coming out. Right, you're right. But now we're at the point where, you know, like, we're, we're, we're watching this demise. I've grown up with it, I've lived with it, and it's sad to see it go down, and I'm not letting it go down. Then it continue to be a voice, as will Kevin and Jeannie, we're the Arcade Brigade. <laughs> Peace! <clears throat> wow, Nels, you really... Alright. Yeah, he really went off on that.